A-B testing enables you to experiment with how changes to your app affects metrics you care about. PostHog makes it easy to set up A-B tests in Python. This tutorial shows you how to create a basic Python app with Flask. Add PostHog to it and then set up an A-B test to compare button variants. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is create a Flask application. And if you haven't already, set up your free PostHog account because we will need that in this tutorial. So inside our directory, let's go ahead and just create a new folder. And I'm going to name this AB Test Demo. And now inside our AB Test Demo, let's create a Python file called hello.py. The next thing we need to do is create a virtual environment and that's just to separate our dependencies. So what we can do is you can do a Python 3 dash M V E and V V E and V, or if you're using visual studio code, you can just come down here and say, create new virtual environment. We want to create a V E and V and we're going to use our default Python installation. And once you do that, if we open up our terminal, we can see that we have it installed. We're using our V E and V. And now we need to say pip install flask. Perfect. Now let's go into our hello pi and let's save this new code where we just import flask and we're going to return a small p tag of hello world. After you do this, let's go ahead and add a few more dependencies. So we're going to have our request and our make response. And under our hello world, let's just create a new app dot route where we're just going to have a blog and we pass in a string. What we need to do now is let's CD and do our app test demo. And then let's go ahead and do a flask dash dash app hello run. This will run our application on port 5000. So if you go ahead and open up this URL, we can see that we get hello world up here in the left hand corner. And if we typed in like slash blog slash 13, we would get welcome to the blog post with a 13. And then if we say like, it's going to say thanks for liking 13. All right, the next thing that we need to do is do a pip install for post hog and UUID. This will download the dependencies that we need to be able to use post hog. And now under our first line of imports, I am going to add a new import of from post hog import post hog and then import UUID where we are instantiating a new post hog variable with our API and host. Now to find this API and host, if you go back into our homepage post hog and you go down into settings, we can see in our web snippet, we have post hog init with an API key and an API host. If we grab this API key and we add that right here where it says API, and then we grab this host, and add it right here where it says host and we save our application that will now instantiate post hog to work with your account. Now in our blog route, we are going to set up a UUID user ID using a cookie. If the user ID doesn't exist, we generate a new one and set it as the new cookie. If it does, we get it from the cookie. We will use this UUID from the cookie for targeting our AB test. So with this user ID value, we then use post log to capture a like post event with a slug property. So right here, let's go ahead and just override that. Rerun our application. And if we go to something like blog slash cool, we can see welcome to the blog post cool. And we can say like, thanks for liking cool. However, this time when we're clicking the like button, we are capturing that event inside post hog. So if we go into our post hog account and we click activity, we can see that our liked button was clicked from our post hog Python a few seconds ago. So what we can do now is let's go into our AB testing, click create new experiment. We need to enter a name. So I'm going to name this blog like with our feature flag is going to be blog dash like. Let's continue. Let's change it to a trend and we want our trend to be liked post. Let's scroll down here and say save as draft. And then let's go ahead and launch our new AB testing scenario. If we go into our feature flag, we can see our blog like feature flag is also enabled. Let's go back into our code and right above this elif, I'm going to swap this out just so it can work with our new feature flag, where if our flag is equal to test, we are going to say like this cool blog. And if it's not, it's just going to say like. 
Lastly, we must capture the experiment details in our event. So when we scroll down, we can see that we have our posthog.capture, user ID, liked post, and our slug. Right under our slug, let's go ahead and add this formatted string of our feature flag key of our flag. All right, so let's go ahead and rerun our application. Let's open it back up. And if we go ahead and refresh the screen, it's going to say welcome to the very cool blog cool and we can like this cool blog. Or if we go ahead and go back into our postdoc account and we go into our feature flags and we say edit and we override our condition to always be our controlled environment because that was our test environment, right? We had a new button that we could use and then we save our control environment. Now everything will go to a controlled environment. So if we go back into our application and we refresh this again, we're going to see welcome to the blog post cool where we can like it. After this, if we go back into our application and we head over into our AB testing, we click blog like. And here inside our A-B testing, we can see our blog-like experiments. All right, and that's it. That's how you can easily implement post-hog A-B testing inside your Python application. And I'll see you in the next video.